Hey folks! It seems like I should have covered Save by the Bell ages ago, and even I'm amazed it's taken me this long, so let's dive right into some pastel early 90s goodness. Choosing a particularly funny episode of Save by the Bell is like trying to decide the spookiest Baywatch nights. It simply can't be done alone. So I held another viewer's choice poll on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash movie nights if you'd like to support the show and get goodies like this. Wink! and patrons got to pick between four particularly juicy episodes. You know, we had some absolute classics on there, such as Rocky Mentary and Jesse's Song, but y'all went with the funny racism one. Anyone who's watched my stuff knows I try to avoid being topical at any point in my life, lest I become popular or relevant, but I can see how blatant racism might be on people's brains currently. The viewer's choice is running, Zach. Let's go! We begin things at the Max, where Zack and his cheerleading squad delayed reaction frighten this waitress. She's just now remembered some horrifying cheerleading-related accident, I'm sure. Zack, you were so awesome at the track meet. See, this is what brought viewers back week after week. Zack, a popular kid with no real problems, living his best, most relatable life. This guy knows what I'm talking about. Zack, I haven't seen you run that fast since the time you stole Cindy Zeffirelli's bathing suit. <laughs> Comic timing? Zero. Perving on a naked preteen girl? Also zero. You sicken me, Zack Morris. Switching gears from Zack being so popular and cute, Lisa remembers she needs to finish a family tree presentation, revealing her great-great-great-grandfather was a slave. Looks like he needed to be... Saved by the bell! I'm sorry, slavery was a horrifying time in history. A period that has not aged well, much like Saved by the Bell. So really, when you think about it, there's no show more appropriate to talk about this atrocity against other human beings. Slavery? That's a bummer. But at least they didn't have the pressure of winning a track championship, am I right, Preppy? Time out. I don't know, are we in over our heads? If we mess this up, Kelly might break up with me, and then I'll lose the track championship, just like the slaves! Everyone shares a little bit about their ancestors, but Jessie is hesitant to talk about hers. Screech gets in another unfunny joke. Um, well, they're dead. <laughs> <laughs> yep, all of them. They died hundreds of years ago. <laughs> so sad. I can't tell if he's supposed to be massively sarcastic or just dumb. My ancestors? Adam and Eve? <laughs> I didn't know Adam and Eve's last name was Morris. Confirmed for dumb. Screech, you built an artificially intelligent robot named Kevin. I don't understand you as a character. Conveniently, while Zack and Screech are looking through a trunk, Zack finds an old photograph of a Native American. Guess he just never noticed that before. Also, just now remembering his mother telling him about a distant Native American relative, he concludes the man in the picture could be one of his ancestors. Cue the insensitive Native American jokes. It's perfect for my family tree presentation. Hey, and you can help me be an Indian. How? That's a good start. <laughs> <laughs> I think Abraham would be proud of you today. You're getting an A. Nice, sarcastic surprise from Lisa there. I wasn't aware teachers just gave you the grade automatically either, but okay. When Jessie is asked to give her presentation, she reveals the horrible truth she never wanted to get out. Her ancestors were slave traders. Lisa, can you ever forgive me? I'm so ashamed. Well, Jessie, you had nothing to do with it. Oh, just say it! You hate me! Unleash those centuries of repressed anger! <laughs> Jessie, you're being silly. <laughs> you got that right, studio laughter. Slavery is bad. That's not debatable. And Jessie's heart is in the right place, despite being misguided in how she deals with it. But I don't know. Uh, the way this is handled might seem kind of frivolous. But we can also learn from the mistakes of Jessie's forefathers. Jessie had four fathers? <laughs> You made a robot! Way to drop the ball, teacher lady. This is when you step in to school this fool. This is getting embarrassing. Let's see how Zack does with his presentation. I come from a long line of fierce warriors and great hunters. Me, <laughs> me. They roam the wide open plains in search of their daily food. Me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> me uncomfortable. Okay, guys, I get this is supposed to be disrespectful, but the audience's laughter kind of undermines the message. The teacher tells Zack to meet a friend of hers to do some more research, so he can repeat the presentation on Friday. 
but gasp! The track championship is on Friday! Time out. I'm beginning to think Miss Wentworth is getting too big for her britches. Doesn't she know who I am, Zach Morris, stopper of time itself? She needs to be taught a lesson. I mean, it doesn't really count as murder if no one witnesses it, right? It's what my ancestors would have done. But alas, Miss Wentworth can't give him an A if she's dead. Zack visits her friend, Chief Henry, who is going to teach Zack some valuable lessons about Native Americans. Hey, with that blonde hair, you must be from some Malibu surfing tribe. <laughs> Hang ten, dude. That is an offensive stereotype, sir. This is going to go pretty much exactly how you expect. Zack only thinks of Native Americans as stereotypes, and Chief Henry opens his eyes to the many facets of Native American peoples and cultures. By massive coincidence, Miss Wentworth's random Native American friend is either part of Zack's ancestor's tribe, or knows about this specific Native American from some other tribe for unexplained reasons. Mr. Belding is shoehorned in because he's in the credits, but is largely immaterial. Hey Preppy, you had racism yet? Lisa, let me buy you a soda to make up for my ancestors. Oh, looks like she saw the Kendall Jenner Pepsi ad. Look guys, I can jote in the conversation too. Jesse and Slater enter their usual battle of wits, with Jesse using Slater's bullfighting ancestors against him. Mind your own business, bull killer. Hey, that's bullfighter, slave trader. <laughs> I have not been to the mall in weeks. I will take you there. I'll carry you on my back. There's a picture, driving Miss Dizzy. Who wrote this? Who wrote this? By this point in the episode, Zack has gained a new respect for his Native American ancestors and is ready to give his makeup presentation. But first, Screech talks about his ancestors. I am the great-grandson of Luigi Paurelli, the dashing and debonair Italian lover and spy. <laughs> yeah, 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 respect people's cultures and all that. Listen to Screech's funny Italian accent! Super Mario Bros! Spaghetti and meatballs! Where's Miss Wentworth's random Italian friend to teach him a lesson? And thank you, my little pizza pie. Yeah, <laughs> oh, Screech, obviously you are a pepperoni off the old block. <laughs> What's in my grave? You? Hey! How was that an A assignment? He literally did the exact same thing Zack did for an F. But now, Zack's got his A material. It's time for him to enlighten everyone else about true Native Americans. Oh no. I am a direct descendant of the Nez Perce tribe who once lived peacefully in Oregon's Wallowa Valley. My people were forced off their land so settlers could mine for gold. Okay, to give some credit, he does actually tell some history here. But he is still wearing a headdress, which most Native Americans consider disrespectful unless you've earned it or gained permission, and backed up by vaguely spiritual flute music, which I'm kind of on the fence about. Plus, you know, from a behind-the-scenes perspective, the actor is not Native American. Without being as well-versed in Native American culture as running Zack here is, I can't speak about the accuracy or meaning of the other clothes, accessories, or face paint, but I'm gonna take a wild guess and say that Saved by the Bell put as much research into this as Zack at the beginning of this episode. For an episode that's supposed to be about the plight of the Native Americans, they sure bungled it. Well, it was an Italian lover good, so B minus. We are finally gonna cream valley, Zach. I love you. <laughs> I mean, I like you. I mean, <clears throat> job well done, son. Keep up the good work. No homo, Zach. I'd like to speak to Chief Henry. Tell him it's running, Zach. What? Chief Henry died this morning. Go Bayside. No lie, <laughs> I legit forgot this hilarious thing happened. Thanks for the laughs episode. Zach's so fast I didn't even see him come in. <laughs> it's because he didn't show up, you twink. No homo, Slater. Hey, sleeping Zach. Wake up. Bet you thought this wouldn't get any dumber, huh? Well, that's something else you didn't know about Native Americans. We have a great sense of humor. So yeah, ghost dream. Chief Henry gives Zack some much-needed closure. After all, he was his closest friend for 20 minutes, but more importantly, inspires him to regain his lost confidence regarding the track championship. Buy you a car? That's crazy. And so are you, nephew. Don't leave me alone. I'm gonna kick your butt. <laughs> Aww. Aww, I guess that's the end of that? By the way, we never found out if they won the championship or not. The end. Running back, 
have little white dove with a love big as the sky. Good and bad, love little white dove with a love that could die.